Hi friends, welcome to the Mystery at Rosewood Manor, a choose your own adventure crochet along. Um, I'm Kelsey Emerson, the pattern designer. My shop is The Knotting Shed. Today we're going to be going through our stitch guide um, and I'm here to kind of more illustrate how our stitches are broken down so that you yourself can maybe go on to YouTube or other pattern tutorials um, if you ever get stuck with one of our stitches. Um, so let's get started and I'm going to explain exactly how this pattern works. So to get things started, I first want to explain how I have formatted my stitch terminology within our pattern. I will always follow the same format for stitches to make um, complex stitches a bit more simple to follow. So they will always start with a number, so that's your quantity, placement, um, then we'll have our stitch and a hyphen followed by any special instructions. Now this will always be one um, single word or phrase. If we need to repeat quantities of this, there'll be another number over here with a space to follow. Let me show you some examples to make this a little bit easier to understand. So number, we got that. That's like, you know, just any number, two, three, five, anything. So I'm going to leave a two up here for now. Um, placement, as you know, in crochet, we can insert our hook into in lots of different locations into our stitch work to make different kinds of stitches. So for example, in our pattern, we will be using techniques like FP, which is front post, BP, back post, FL, front loop, BL, back loop, and TL, which is third loop. Finally, or next we have our stitches. Um, our pattern is in US terminology, so please keep that in mind if you are in the UK or somewhere else around the world crocheting with us. Um, so SC is single crochet, HDC half double crochet, DC double crochet, TR triple crochet or treble depending where you're from, and um, a puff stitch. We'll also be using that periodically throughout the pattern. Finally, um, our stitches will be, if they have any special instructions, it will be marked off with a hyphen and um, a short word like INC, which stands for increase. That's where we are doing two stitches within one stitch from the previous round. DEC or decrease, which is joining two stitches together. Similarly, we have TOG, which stands for together. I will be including that phrase um, if it's more than two stitches joined together. So three, four, something like that. And finally, we have CL, which stands for cluster. So let me break this down a little bit more and I'll do a few examples so you know what I am talking about. So first, let's talk about our stitch placement a little bit. Um, as I had mentioned, we have both front loop, back loop, and third loop stitches in this pattern. Um, and I just want to make sure we can see where we are working. So here, for example, we're just going to be practicing front loop, double crochet. Um, there's no quantity, so we're not joining multiple together. There's no special instructions, just basic front loop, double crochet. So in my pattern, we're always going to start on the stitch that is basically joining our um, previous round together. So always work into the stitch that's connected to your um, starting chains. Starting chains will not count towards um, stitch counts, but I will make sure that that's very clear within the pattern itself. So let's start with a double crochet in the front loop. So normally I would push through and go under both, as you can see both loops on my hook, but we're just doing a front loop double crochet. So I want to try and avoid this um, back loop right here. So to do that, I still tuck under, but I kind of push through the two right there. So as you can see, I only have one of the loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, complete my stitch, and there is a front loop double crochet. Now you can tell if you've done it correctly because on the back, you'll start to kind of form like a little line on the back that won't be visible to you, but um, it is available to add um, secondary stitches, which we do quite a bit in this pattern. So let me just do a few more of these. Front loop, I'm going to go through the front and back loop, yarn over, complete my double crochet. Let's just do a couple of these really quickly so you can see that line, that very distinct line um, on the wrong side of our work from the back loop being left behind. So 
so it looks relatively normal maybe a little bit looser from the front and then on the back side there we have a nice distinct line so um, especially in part one we will be working sometimes um, layering our project so we'll do one section in the front loop and then um, kind of slip, slip stitch behind and then start picking up an additional row behind here and that will become clear um, within the pattern. I have lots of pictures if you get stuck on that. So what happens if we add any special instructions to this? Say, um, let's add a decrease, for example. I don't actually know if we have any front loop double crochet decreases, but it's always good to practice the terminology. So let's do a regular double crochet front loop. If it's a decrease, I am going to join two stitches from the previous row together yarn over and pull through both. So there is my decrease. Um, I do know that we have several front loop double crochet increases in our pattern. So let's switch out our special instructions to an increase. So we already have a few front loop double crochets. Let's add some increases. So an increase just means work two stitches into one stitch from the previous round. So there's my first. It's an increase, so I'm going to add a second. Let's do another one of those. And there you have it. This stitch comes up um, a lot in the first part of our pattern. Um, and not to give anything away, but within that pattern, we'll also have some instructions to chain two and slip stitch into the same stitch. So let me just show you that really quickly. So I've already done my increase. I'm going to chain two, go into that same stitch. And do a slip stitch. I don't want to give away what it is but it's called Rosewood Manor. Maybe you can figure out what we're making here but there we have um, some of the stitches that we're going to use in part one. From there it says chain two and then you continue again into the next stitch with more front loop double crochets. Uh, increases, sorry. Front loop double crochet increase. Can you tell what we're going to make? <laughs> So there we have it. There's some front loop double crochets, front loop double crochet increases and decreases. So let's switch out to working in the back loop. So I'm gonna take off this increase. Let's just do a basic double crochet in the back loop. Pardon my arm. So now we have BL back loop double crochet. I still have my work from the last round. I'm just gonna leave this on my hook because, or on my swatch because it doesn't really matter. So let's, instead of working into the front loop, so normally if we were doing front loop, we'd work right here. Back loop is much the same, but you skip the front loop and push it through just the one loop furthest away from your body, I guess. Let's do a few of these and you'll, whoops, you will see that we get a nice horizontal line on the bottom of our stitches. As you can see, it's starting to form right here. That looks pretty good. So should we do a practice uh, increase really quickly? We'll add our increase, back loop, double crochet, hyphen, ink, increase. That just means work two stitches into one. So one double crochet. There's our second, and we're still just working in the back loop, so we have that nice crisp line on the bottom of our row. Next, I want to talk about the third loop. So on traditional crochet, there is the front loop, which is this little string right here closest to my body. There's the back loop, which is behind that. And it's easy to find on half double crochets, but really there is a third loop for almost every kind of stitch. And I want to show it to you. So if you flip it over, it's this extra little piece right here that's behind the back loop. This is on a double crochet. There is a third loop on a half double crochet that is really easy to find. There's a third loop on a single crochet that is a little bit tougher to find. It is there. Um, if you have trouble finding the third loop, I encourage you to go onto other tutorial videos on YouTube and try and find it. So um, I'm going to pull this out. This is from our last example. Um, if I'm going to do third loop half double crochet, I'm going to do a half double crochet is normal but instead of going into the front here I'm going to tuck it behind and find that little loop it's really tough you got to kind of like 
wedge it in there, yarn over, and pull through all three for a half double crochet. So I'm going to do a few of these. I want to highlight what your third loop really does for you. Oops, see, it is tough. Even I have trouble. Third loop is really cool because it makes almost like a knit cable effect. Um, and I've used this quite a bit in our pattern to distinguish different pattern sections. So if you can see here, those two front loop and back loops that we did not work into get pushed up to the front. So it makes like a distinct line here. So let me do a few more just to show you um, what that does. So I'm gonna, I always like to bend it towards my body and then I can really see where that third loop is. And I can do any stitch here. So for right now I'm doing third loop, half double crochet. There's my placement and my stitch. If I needed to, I could switch it up. I can do a third loop, double crochet. Same way, just struggle and find that little third loop back there. As much as possible when we're working in the third loop, I've tried to make it so that you are working into a half double crochet because it's a lot easier to get your hook into the third loop on a half double crochet. But there are times where it could be any number of stitches. So there's a double crochet. Let's just go through our stitches. I'm going to make a triple crochet. So despite whatever the stitches in the back, no matter what, you will see this sort of line appear almost like a cable um, across your work to make a distinct 3D um, section. So there's the third loop stitches. Thank you. So here's a stitch you may encounter in our pattern. It's a five DC CL or a five double crochet cluster stitch. I know this is called other things sometimes, but to be clear, um, I have tried to break it down as much as possible in case we ever encounter, say, a 4DC CL or a 3DC CL. So let me show you really quickly. I've worked up just a basic circle um, to get us started. I'm using worsted weight yarn. You don't have to. I just wanted to make sure the stitches are nice and big and clear. So first I'm going to um, start off by double crocheting a few stitches to get us out of the start of our new row and okay so we on our chart here we have five is our quantity placement there's nothing there so that means we're stitching into both the front and back loop as normal um, dc double crochet and cluster so that means we are joining five stitches together so to do that i'm going to yarn over my hook insert pull up a loop pull through two. Now I'm not going to complete my double crochet as normal. Instead, I'm going to continue until I have the base of five double crochets on my hook. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So I should have one, two, three, four, five, six loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all. There we go. So we have a five double crochet cluster. So next I'm going to talk about front post and back post stitches. Here we're going to try and do front post double crochet and back post double crochet. Um, I'll just alternate them for you to see the difference. They're really cool. Um, so I've already worked up my circle. I have a couple stitches here just to get us off of this um, starting point. So let's start with a front post stitch. So we work a double crochet as normal, but instead of going into the stitch as we would before, we have to find the post. Now the post is these like tall bars um, that are in the stitches below. You can work into the front post of a double crochet, single crochet, really any, even a, a slip stitch, it's tough to find. But all it does is instead of working into the top, it pops up this bar here to give us a little bit of a three-dimensional effect. So if I'm going to do a front post, I want the, this post to um, appear forwards to me. So I'm going to start by yarning over my hook. I'm going to go behind it here on the right side. This is if you're a right-handed crocheter. And if, as you can see, I've kind of lifted this up onto my hook. Now I'm going to yarn over as normal, pull up, and complete my double crochet. So if you see here, it kind of has made like a bar, a raised bar that is 
further up off of the, the flat level that the rest of my stitches are, are on. So let me do another front post. If I'm doing a front post, I start on the right side, tuck it behind the post, yarn over, and pull through, and complete my stitch. Now back post is very similar. However, a back post will um, push your post, I guess, backwards instead of forwards. Um, so for that one, we do the same thing, but instead of going down and in, into behind the post, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go from the behind of our stitch, so on the wrong side back here, behind and over. I don't know if you can see that very well. So it's kind of hidden my post and I'm going to pull my yarn through and complete my stitch. So a front post makes a vertical bar, a back post will start making a horizontal bar. Um, so let me do another back post. So I'm yarning over, I'm going to tuck it from the behind, up through my stitch, in front of it, over the post, yarn over, pull through, and complete my stitch. So there we have two front posts, two back posts. Let me do another quick series of that so you can see really see the difference. Here's my front post. I make it so the post is over my hook. If that makes sense, my post is, is showing over the hook instead of being hidden by the hook. And there's two more front post double crochets. Now if I want to do two more back post double crochets, we're going to yarn over not go in the front. We're going to go from the behind, tuck it over the post, and it kind of pushes it backwards a little bit, raising that horizontal bar here. And one more just to set, finish us off. And there we have it. So we've made front post, front post, back post, back post, front post, front post, back post, back post. And as you can kind of see, the front posts are raised up, whereas the back posts are kind of like pushed backwards. So we get a nice 3D effect here. Now, what happens if we add some of our special instructions here? So for example, what if we add an increase to one of our posts? So let's do a front post double crochet increase. Um, so I'm going to, I pulled out all of my other front post, back posts for you to start fresh. I'm just going to do a couple basic double crochets to get us started. Now I want to do a front post double crochet increase. So that means I need to work two stitches into the same placement from the previous row. So we're going to do what we just practiced, one front post double crochet. So there we have our first stitch, but it's an increase. So we need to do exactly what we did again, and we're going to once again go from behind. We're going to uh, yarn over, kind of cross over our stitch we just did, and go back behind the post again and complete our stitch. So as you can see, we have now made an increase here. We have two stitches within the same stitch from the previous row. So let me keep practicing that. I'm going to do, let's just do one in this one. And now let's do an increase in this one again. So start with my first front post double crochet. And then now we're at another increase. So I need to add a second stitch right here. So I'm going to yarn over again, go back to the first post and complete a second. So we have an increase, a single stitch and an increase. And a stitch I use a lot in this pattern, instead of an increase, is a cluster stitch. So we're gonna do a front post double crochet cluster stitch. Um, more often than not, I think almost every time, it is a double front post double crochet cluster stitch, meaning we're only working two stitches into our cluster. Now remember, a cluster can join lots of stitches together, so Theoretically, it could be five front post double crochet clusters, but in our pattern, for the most part, I think it's a two or a double front post double crochet cluster. 
This may have a technical term for the stitch. I don't know what it is, so I've broken it down to try and be very, very clear for you guys. Um, I use this stitch a lot to really pop up and define um, some of our stitch work. So this is what we just did um, with our increases. I'm going to show you the difference of a cluster. Very similar. The difference with a cluster is that instead of adding two stitches, you are still only adding one stitch to your stitch count. So here I have, let me pull this one out. Here I have just a few basic double crochets. Now to make my two front post double crochet cluster or a double front post double crochet cluster, um, I will do a front post double crochet or start one, yarn over, but I will not complete my stitch because we're doing a cluster. So we only want to have one final stitch at the end. I will yarn over again and add a second front post double crochet. So there's my one and two front post double crochet. Yarn over, I will not pull through my first one just yet. We're gonna pull through two loops. Now I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Now, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but what we've done here is we've made like a extra double thick um, stitch. So really this is only one stitch towards your stitch count, but it's two, um, stitches kind of worked into our front post to make it really, really pop up, be really, really thick. I use this quite a bit for um, three-dimensional um, effort or techniques. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to yarn over, go into my front post, pull up, pull through two, but I will not complete my double crochet because we need to add a second stitch. Yarn over, and pull through all three. Oops. So there you have it. This technique is used a lot in um, cable stitching for sweaters when you get those nice like intricate crossovers. I've used it a lot to really pop up almost like pictures within our pattern and you will see that as you go. Um, things kind of pop up and like set back in relief that makes for really cool details. Let me do one more of those just so we're very clear. Yarn over, go behind my post for a front post, double crochet, yarn over and pull up, pull through two, and I'm gonna leave those two on the hook, yarn over again, go behind my post for a front post double crochet, and pull through all three. And there you have it. So if this stitch isn't complicated enough for you, I have another variation of this stitch. It is a, let me switch this over so we can see it on camera, double front post, double crochet cluster together. <laughs> so before you get really mad at me, all that means is instead of making single stitches of our front post double crochet clusters, or a double, sorry, double front post double crochet clusters, we're going to join two of them together to form um, basically a decrease. Um, I've added together here just because sometimes we will um, be joining more than two stitches together. So I have a bunch of my single stitches worked up here. Let's join two of them together. So we're going to complete most of our first stitch. And I'm going to leave, oops, leave my three loops on my hook and move onto my next post. Do the same thing, yarn over, tuck through, pull up, yarn over. That's one double crochet, but we need to have a double, double crochet. Pull up. Now I have one, two, three, four, five loops on my hook. And as you can see, we're going to join these two posts together, yarn over and pull through all of them. It's going to make kind of like a upside down V shape for similar to a decrease. Um, and yeah, there you go. Let me show you that one more time. So we're going to actually, let me add a few double crochets just so we're not starting to warp our uh, sample piece here. Okay, so sorry about that. We have yarn over behind the post for a front post double crochet yarn over pull up leave that on the hook 
repeat those same steps. I'm going to leave three loops on the hook, move into my next post because we're joining two posts together. And it gets a little messy with all the loops on your hook, but I know you can do it. <laughs> and finally, we're going to pull through all five loops. And there you have it. Now the final stitch I want to talk to you about today is the puff stitch. Um, and there are lots of variations on how to do the puff stitch. I'll show you how I do mine. If you have a different way of making puff stitches that you prefer, I invite you to try those out, see what looks best for your project. So a puff stitch is basically a modified half double crochet or like a half double crochet cluster. So to show you the difference, I'm just going to add in a couple half double crochets here oops, to get us started. Now if I want to do a puff stitch, I'm basically going to be joining multiple half double crochets together. So we're going to yarn over our hook, push through, grab a loop and pull up. I have three on my three loops on my hook and we're just going to do it again a second time, a third time, and I like to do it a fourth time. It doesn't exactly matter how many times you want to go through the loop. It is easier if you do less. It's more defined if you do more. Sometimes people like to do five. Um, I just like to do four, but it is up to you. So on my hook total, if I do four, um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops on my hook. Then I yarn over and I pull through the whole thing. Sometimes it's a little tough to get your hook through. Now to finish off a puff stitch, we almost have to like lock these loops in place. So to do that, we just yarn over and do a chain. Um, something to note in my pattern is traditionally a puff stitch, even though it has two of those little like V shapes up top, a puff stitch technically counts as one stitch. So you'll kind of work into this first stitch here and skip your joining chain. Periodically in my pattern though, I do have you work in both the puff stitch itself and the joining chain. Um, that will be made very clear in the pattern where and when you have to do that. Um, that is just for, you know, stitch counts and stuff. So let's do that again. I'm going to do a couple half double crochets between just so you can really see the difference. Let's do say three. One, two, and three. And now let's do another puff stitch. So we yarn over, push through one, yarn over, two, yarn over, three, yarn over, four, with nine loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through the whole thing, gotta wiggle it around a little bit, and closing chain. So there we have a puff stitch. What if we add any of our special instructions or our modifiers to this? Now, I don't have any, as far as I know, I don't think I have any puff increases or decreases, but I will occasionally have them in um, unique placements. So say, for example, we have a back loop, a back loop puff stitch. Um, let's do a couple half double crochets. Okay, one more, make it even. So if I'm doing a back loop, back loop puff stitch, all that is modifying is the placement of the stitch. So if it's a back loop, I don't, I want to skip this front loop right here and I'm still going to complete my puff stitch as normal. So one, two, three, four. Again, if you want to do three loops or five loops, that is up to you. Yarn over, pull through and close it up with a chain. So there is a back loop puff. I hope this tutorial has helped you. Um, please let me know if you still have any questions about how our stitch terminology is formatted, some of our special stitches. Um, I'd be happy to chat with you one-on-one -on -one over Facebook Messenger or email. If you really get stuck in the pattern, the best way to get help is to go onto our Facebook page the Mystery at Rosewood Manor, a Choose Your Own Adventure crochet along. It's a private group. I hope you're already a member. If you're not, please let me know. Um, there will be a dedicated help post there 
for all of your fellow crocheters that are working simultaneously on this project with you to um, kind of help each other out. So there you can post pictures or ask questions. Um, if you feel like you really understand the pattern, please hop on there and help your friends so we can all work on this together. If you want to contact me personally about the pattern, please feel free to send me an email or private messenger over Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm on email at nodding shed, so that's K-N-O-T-T-I-N-G shed at gmail.com. Um, I am a stay-at-home mom, so I might need a few days to get back to you. I'm going to try to reply to every email within 48 hours, um, but if you need immediate assistance, I really recommend going onto Facebook and finding those help posts so we can all help each other out. Uh, thank you for sticking along with me. I know this is a long one. And I hope um, you really understand our terminology now. And I will see you at the manor soon. Bye.